Hi and welcome to this video in the MRDC Understanding Concepts series. In this video we're going to look at how you feed an ITF, an inter intermediate tables file, back into another run. Now perhaps unlike some of the other video topics, this one really needs explaining why you're doing it. You'll find the files from this video in the folder PRJ101. So why would you want to feed an ITF back into another run? Well, first of all, what is in an ITF? An ITF is an intermediate tables file, and you can think of it as holding matrices of incremented tables within the system so that you can use them elsewhere. Now, the two most common things that you want to pull in, in my experience, are when you've done target weighting of any sort or rim weighting, you might want to pull those figures back into a data stage so that when you export, the figures will appear on the IDF and then can be available for export to SPSS or any other system, Reflect, for example, and other bits of software where you want to export. Because you have to do that because target weighting is calculated in a stage or stages after the IDF has been written. So unless you read it back into another data stage, that variable that holds the weight won't be present. The other example I can think of that I've used it is, perhaps only a type of example, would be distances. So imagine you're doing a survey on air travel. You might have a matrix of figures that contains all the distances between the major European airports, for example. So that if someone flew from London to Berlin, you would want to look that up on a matrix so that you knew exactly the distance that someone had travelled. Whereas if they're flown from, let's say, Munich to Barcelona, that would be a different distance that you could look up from a table effectively with the rows as the origin and the columns as the destination. And you imagine all the figures sitting in that in a table that you then want available to be able to read up a distance when you know what airport someone boarded at and what uh, destination they had. So there's two examples of where you want to read a bank of figures or um, a, a table in to an MRDCL data stage. The latter example you could now do through a spreadsheet using EPS, and that's another technique that you could use for reading in a bank of figures and picking off the distance, for example. But certainly when you've got the example of where you want to take a value that's been incremented in a tables and the next stage or some figures in a table and want to apply those and have them available on an IDF, there is no other choice. So this is in fact uh, the files used in the rim weighting uh, video that you can watch. We won't go through what the rim weighting is doing here. What we are going to focus on though is that the variable down here called weight is picked up indeed the table called uh, rim wt and it's all done in the table stage so the first time that the value of weight is known is down here when it gets to the table stage now i have seen people get around this problem by listing out the weights for each of the cells within their sample or even listing out the weight for each respondent so you could for example say uh, here list dollar iobs and dollar weight, uh, and probably list that to a CSV file, so that you would have a CSV file with all the weights for each respondent, and then having got that file, you could then um, import, input them from that CSV file into another data stage. That's certainly one way of working. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best way of working because it would mean you'd have to rebuild the files each time you, if, if the weighting ever changed or your sample size ever changed, you would keep having to put the figures back in manually in some way into the data stage that you were using. So I'm not going to cover that in this particular video. What I'm going to cover, though, is how we can get this variable weight back into another run. So here's the variable I want, but I want it in a data stage so that when I export, let's say, to triple S for, 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 as a good enough example, that variable is on the IDF and therefore ends up in the triple S export. 
If I export this project at the moment, the only variables I will get will be gender, age, and price, because they're the only ones that appear in the data stage. So how do I get around that? So what I will do first of all is I'm going to run a run called run13d, and that's produced my run and calculated all my weighting for me. Now I've got another run here called run13e, and what that's going to do is it's going to read the data again, although it could have worked off the IDF uh, if I wanted to just do tables, but really I want to reread the data again so that I can rebuild the IDF with some figures that I'm going to be picking out from run13d. So run13d.itf is a file that's hidden away down the K file in the directory that you're working, and I actually want to read the figures off or some of the figures off that are in that run13d. Now it's a good idea to keep that file as small as possible so we're not reading in hundreds of tables that we don't need. All we want, in fact, is the table rimwt. And then it's quite simple because all I've got to do now is to say that my matrix for my weighting is gender by age. And it's as though rim weighting is in this run. You're effectively pulling the table into this run so it's there to pick up, just like I did in the table stage of the run 13D just now. But the crucial thing is here, it's coming before the finished data, which means that the variable weight is on the IDF. So now if I run this and I choose to export, and let's pick triple S as my export, click OK, click OK, and it's overwriting the files already in this folder. And now if we look at run13e for the XML file that it's produced, we should find that weight is one of the variables. So it's going gender, age, price, and indeed it's pulled in rimext, the variable that um, had the matrix of gender within age. But more importantly, here's the variable weight. So now when I write this file out, and I pass it to someone else, they'll have the weighting factors that were applied to each respondent type ready there so that they can then do their own analysis in whatever system they want to. So that's the reason for, for having the ability to pull in an ITF into a run, and that's how you apply it. I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you.